Have you ever noticed a block of Python code starting with the keyword for, followed by indented lines of code? This structure is called a for loop, and programmers often use it to automate repetitive tasks. Let's start with a simple example. To liquidate inventory, a store owner wants to apply a 10% discount to the price of some items. To discount the prices using Python, the owner could, one price at a time, apply the discount and print the results. This approach works. We did calculate the discounted prices, but writing each calculation manually has some drawbacks. Can you imagine how long it would take to implement if, instead of just four prices, the list contained hundreds of them? This is exactly where for loops shine. They can efficiently apply the same operations to every item in a list, whether it contains four prices or 400. A for loop begins with the keyword for. This keyword tells Python that we want to repeat some actions for multiple items. We follow the for keyword with a variable name of our choice. Programmers often call this variable the loop or iteration variable. During the execution of the loop, this variable will be sequentially assigned each item in the collection we want to iterate through. Since this iteration variable will hold individual price values, let's rename it price. Next, we follow the iteration variable with the keyword in. The in keyword connects our loop variable to the list we want to loop through, in this case, prices. Finally, we complete the first line of our for loop with a colon. This first line is called the for loop header. Below the header, we write indented code that will run for each item. For each price, we apply the discount and print the discounted value. This indented block is called the loop body. And that's it, our for loop is complete. Now let's walk through how Python will execute this loop when the cell is run. First, Python executes the for loop header and creates the loop variable price. Since this is the first iteration of the loop, Python assigns the first item in the prices list, $12.99, to the price variable. Python then enters the loop body, calculates $12.99 times 0.9, and prints the result 11.691. Since there are no more lines in the body, Python returns to the header. Now, what happens here is important. The price variable is reassigned to the next value in the list, 1599. Python enters the loop body again, calculates 1599 times 0.9, and prints 14.391. This pattern continues as long as there are more prices to discount. Python processes the third price, 799, then the fourth price, $27.99. After the fourth iteration, Python returns to the header but finds no more items in the list, so it exits the loop. Since there are no unindented lines of code after the loop, the program ends. But if there were more lines of code, Python would move on to executing those. To confirm this, let's run our code. Great, the discounted prices calculated in our loop match the expected output. In addition, notice that the indented code was executed four times, once per price, while the code after the loop was executed only once. All right, let's take stock of what our for loop has done for us by comparing it to our manual approach. Originally, we wrote the discounted calculations four separate times, one for each price. Using a for loop, we only had to write the discounting operation once, yet Python executed it four times. Now imagine if our list was a thousand prices. The manual approach would require 1,000 lines of code. But the for loop? Still just two lines. The loop automatically scales to discount any number of items in the list. Awesome. So far, we've seen how to build a for loop based on an existing list of items. But sometimes, we simply need to repeat an action and don't have a list to build from. This is also something we can do in Python. Let's see how with a different example. 
Imagine you're organizing a raffle and need to print tickets numbered 0 through 5. To create these tickets, we could begin by creating a list with those numbers and follow up with a loop that iterates through that list. For each ticket number in the ticket numbers list, we first print the text Summer Super Raffle, followed by the ticket number. Notice our loop body now has two lines of code. During each iteration, Python will execute both lines. Running this code, Python indeed prints the raffle tickets we wanted. This works, but imagine we wanted 100 raffle tickets instead of just six. We would need to manually type out all of those numbers. Seems like a lot of work. Luckily, Python has a built-in function that can generate sequential numbers for us. This built-in function is called range. Here's how we can use it. Instead of manually creating a list of numbers and iterating through it, we can call the range function and pass in a six as an argument. This range function call tells Python to generate numbers starting from zero and to stop right before six. Running the code, we get the same ticket as before, but this new approach can scale easily. For example, if we instead pass 106 into the range function, the range function generates tickets with numbers 0 to 105 without any extra work on our end. Note that the range function starts generating numbers from 0 by default. However, if we want to change this lower bound, we can specify it as the first argument. For example, if we want our raffle tickets to be numbered between 1000 and 1005, we can call the range function passing 1000 and 1006 as arguments. Running the code, we get tickets from 1000 to 1005. And that's it! In this video, you've learned how to build for loops, both to iterate through existing lists and to repeat actions using the range function. If you'd like to practice what you've learned in this video, check out the notebook we've created. It has a few exercises to get you started. And if you want us to walk through those exercises step-by-step -step in future videos, just let us know in the comments. We're working on lots more Python Explainer videos like this one, so be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out. We also wanted to give a shout out to our channel members. We appreciate you. If you have any questions or topics that you'd like to learn about, let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.